Throughout history, more than 3,000 men have played Test cricket, and 452 of these players have only ever played one single Test. Be it that they're still playing and just haven't had the opportunity to add to that single Test, that they played in the wrong era for their skill set to flourish, or that they simply weren't good enough. That's 452 cricketers who, for one reason or another, were at one point considered to be good enough to represent their country at the highest level of the game, but only for the briefest period of time. One test wonders have always interested me, yet they are far too often just considered footnotes in cricket history, hidden among the more prominent characters. Yet, in every single case, there's an entire career's worth of cricket before and after their one moment of glory that deserves a spotlight. John Hastings is one of these very test cricketers who only played one test, and he holds a particularly special place in my heart because he really could have played more test cricket. And had he been born in a different era or in a different country, he certainly probably would have, but alas, he didn't. John Hastings was a physically imposing cricketer at 198 centimetres or six foot six, and he was accompanied by a strong frame that gave him a serious presence about him on the pitch. He had this natural aggression in the way he played with both bat and ball, and that made him a very successful bowling all-rounder. He wasn't the quickest bowler in the world, and instead utilised swing and seam and accuracy to his advantage, attempting to outsmart his opposition rather than simply blow them out of the water with pace. Hastings began his career in New South Wales, but he had to move to Victoria to find opportunities, as he couldn't crack a state side that featured names such as Doug Bollinger, Matthew Nicholson, Stuart Clark, Grant Lambert, Mark Cameron, and Moises Henriques. Following his move to Victoria, he finally got his first class debut against a touring India side in 2007, uh, against a top six that included Wasim Jaffa, Dravid, Laxman, Tendulkar, Ganguly, and Yuvraj Singh. But the match was ruined by rain and Hastings only bowled six overs. He got his first real opportunity in first class cricket in the 2008-09 Sheffield Shield season, taking 16 wickets in three matches at 18.56. Over the next few years, Hastings would cement himself as one of Victoria's best performers across all formats. And by the start of the 2012 home summer, he racked up 81 wickets in first class cricket at under 24, and picked up 14 caps for Australia across the limited overs formats placing Hastings well into the view of test selectors. In the third test against South Africa at Perth, John Hastings made his test debut. Not that this caused any significant headlines, as this match was also Ricky Ponting's farewell test. Hastings was selected as part of a very fresh pace attack, with incumbent paces Ben Hilfenhaus and Peter Siddle unable to play due to extreme workloads in the previous test, following the injury of James Pattinson and the very young Josh Hazelwood being unable to make his test debut due to injury. The nature of his debut meant that Hastings would have to perform pretty well to retain his spot going into the future, with the prospective return of Pattinson, Hilfen House and Siddle, and ultimately, he didn't perform that well. He ended that test with a solitary wicket, although one can certainly do worse than taking the outside edge of A.B. de Villiers like he did. Similarly, his contributions of 32 and 20 with the bat and a catch meant that he offered a little bit in every discipline. But just as it was the farewell for Ricky Ponting, it was ultimately the farewell for John Hastings. Not that we knew it at the time. Hastings returned to the Shield and continued to contribute well for Victoria year after year, but he couldn't break into the Australian lineup. Between his test debut and his eventual professional retirement, Australia was simply overloaded with pace bowlers, and Hastings was never going to get in ahead of Stark, Hazelwood, Johnson, Siddle, Harris, Cummins, Pattinson or Bird. But it's safe to say that Hastings' most important work with the Australian team didn't come until his test career was essentially over. It took until 2015 for Hastings to once again be selected for the Australian team, this time in ODIs, but he turned himself into one of Australia's most reliable cricketers albeit for only a relatively short period of time. Hastings' second shot at international cricket came between September of 2015 and June of 2017. And in that time, he took 34 ODI wickets at 24.8 and in an economy of 5.4, alongside his contribution of 189 runs at 38 when given a chance to bat. 
Ultimately, however, injuries got the better of the big man, and in October of 2017, Hastings announced his retirement from all first class and one day cricket. Whilst he continued on in T20s with the Melbourne Stars and the Quetta Gladiators, devoting the remainder of his professional career to the shortest format, it wasn't long until another roadblock came into his path. A relatively sudden lung illness that caused Hastings to cough up blood whenever he bowled emerged and basically put an end to his career. The illness has only ever been described as a mystery lung illness, but it was so severe that doctors warned him that playing cricket could ultimately be fatal. And as of so far, even years on, Hastings has yet to receive a diagnosis of exactly what this condition is. Hastings, however, has returned to the game at sub-district level, where the intensity of the game and the stresses put on the bowler being slightly less, and he now plays first 11 cricket at Q. Hastings probably didn't have the skill set to dominate the test game for an extended period of time among the Australian bowlers of his era, but he exemplified some of cricket's old-fashioned beauty, and while he may have been this hulking figure as he approached the crease, he had the mentality and tactical nous that only the very best of the game possess. Not to mention his ability to put everyone in the crowd on the edge of their seats, as they knew that he had the ability to change the game in a moment with either bats or with the ball. Indeed, Hastings may well have played 50 or 60 tests for another team at another time, but his achievements themselves, regardless of whether he perhaps achieved as much in test cricket as he would have liked to, deserve to be celebrated. And there is scarcely a Victorian or Australian cricket fan going around who doesn't have a deep admiration and respect for John Hastings and the way he played the game.